Eh, drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and switch over. Boop. All right. Seeing Leo again. There's someone in a deep crimson uniform across the hallway. It's Leo. I have to get him to the arena and buy some time while Reen finishes her hacking. I've got to chase him down before I lose sight of him. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Ugh, that one snuck up on me. Last time we got Reen into the multimedia room, and now we're trying to uh, trap Leo. So, looks like you're in the arena. I'm hacking right now, but damn, it's gonna take a bit more time. Leo's near you. See if you could draw him out and stall for time. Let's hurry, Master. If they leave before we face them, this plan will amount to nothing. Remember right. We gotta keep going this way. Fake healing swords.
action and the fake one. Fragment, finish him off. Wrong one. Alright. Uh, fortification. Really? No strength down from that? Yep, they're here. There he is. Gold-haired Harway King stands in the arena, his knight in shining silver armor beside him. I have to distract him to buy some time. Ah, silver. Is your search for the triggers going well? From Leo's conversational tone, you'd think he forgot that we fought yesterday. That works for me. I bring up my uneasiness about the utopia Leo spoke of. A world in which he sees regulation as a necessity. A puzzled expression on his face, Leo answers me with a question. 
Where is there room for any doubt? No poverty, no war, no inequality. Those things are the conditions for happiness, conditions the Harways maintain. There are two types of people, those who manage and those who enjoy the fruits of being managed. In this case, the fruits of being managed are stability and happiness. That's wrong. When people have nothing to strive for, stagnation trumps stability. When individual people work toward a better tomorrow, humanity as a whole progresses. Dan taught me to strive for a goal. Alice reached out for the vigor of human life while in stasis herself. Even little Ronnie had a goal. And wasn't Ronnie? Nope. Hold on. Just a second. Okay, heads up, I'm probably going to get interrupted again in a few minutes because I need to help my brother with something. Okay, where was I? Even little Ronnie had a goal. And wasn't Ronnie taking on the world in her own way? And even Julius. Even that twisted man took a step forward and grasped his memories. I'm positive that stability had no role in the best part of the lives of many of these people. The ability that Leo would impose on us is suspended animation. Of course we'd be free of struggle. Uh, you are hopeless. It is unfortunate that you say such things. You cannot understand me, but I see the eradication of strife under my rule as the noblest achievement. Leo sighs and glances casually at Gawain. Shall we, Gawain? It is sad, but he places himself in opposition to the Harways. As you wish. My holy blade is an incarnation of the sun. For my king, I shall scorch the earth. That's the end of that conversation. The atmosphere on the battlefield instantly changes and Archer leaps forward to engage. Okay, let me get this right. You devoted everything to protecting this king guy? Man, what a pain. I live as a knight should. This is my path, and you have no reason to criticize that. You're as stubborn as me, huh? Hey, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying it's not necessarily as rewarding as you think to live as someone's sword. People can't understand selflessness because it's against human nature. It makes you a freak, you know? No one's going to admire you for walking that path. But I think you know and accept that. Yes. However, I do not desire reward nor do I have any aspirations. I will not repeat mistakes of the past. This time I will believe in my king without a shred of doubt. My holy sword blazes for one reason. My heart has but one wish. To lead my lord to victory. <laughs> Interesting. We've got that in common, too. Our reward is seeing our masters get what they want. I'll 
fight fire with fire. Let's go, White Knight. This time I will make you fall. I had just intended to stall for time, but suddenly the tension in the air draws tight as a bowstring. Don't be worried, Master. I'm not. Engaging them in combat will be easier than talking. We don't have to defeat him, we just need to stall for time. Archer smiles as I'm left wondering if this outcome was inevitable. Fortunately, it seems Gawain has lost his cool. I'll just have to stave him off long enough for Reem to finish. Alright, so I believe I just need to survive this set of turns. So... healed up, but I don't think I need to worry about um, using up his MP for any attack, so... That should be long enough. Sloppy, sloppy, you're too easy to avoid. Archer's taunt is gleeful, but the expression on his face is stern. Even though Gawain is upset, he continues to strike heavily and effectively, driving Archer back. Still nothing. I can tell by Archer's face that they're at their limit. I may have to prepare for the worst. Sorry to make you wait. I'm going to turn off the sun now. The moment Reen's transmission ends, I glance meaningfully at Archer. This is it. I was waiting for this moment! With all his might, Archer drives a single blow into Gawain. A moment later, Gawain is fuming at what's happened to his body. You were just stalling for time! Ugh! What have been... What have I been doing? It was stupid of you to lose your cool. Hurts, doesn't it, to be had like that, Knight of the Sun? Archer's taunt fails to rouse a response from Gawain. Gawain, let's retreat for now. They are victorious today. After Gawain reluctantly lowers his sword, Leo turns to me. He's still so damn upbeat. <laughs> How unexpected. Using a full third of my power, I was still kept at bay. I'm glad to know I wasn't wrong in getting excited about facing you. For someone admitting defeat, Leo looks positively chipper. He laughs cheerfully as he logs out. He was only using a third of his power just now. Knowing Leo, he wasn't lying. But at least I've neutralized one of Gawain's abilities. Two days remain until the elimination battle. Can I catch up to Leo by then? Gotcha. Alright. Uh... Alright. 
Uh, that's actually the perfect opportunity. So give me a second. I'm gonna switch back to the. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the BRB screen, and I'll be right back. And back. Okay, let's go ahead and switch back. Alright, what have we got for dirt on Gawain? Uh, numeral of the Saint, a condition unique to Sir Gawain's existence. During the hours between 9am and 12pm, and those between 3pm and sunset, all of his powers increased by a factor of 3. This was related to the ancient belief that the numeral three was the sacred number of the Celtic gods. Hmm. Forgot about that. Uh, let's see. Here. 
And oh hey, we got our second trip. Alright. So this is the last cipher key. Can't say it's any different from the dozen other ones. What is truly of note here is the dedication and hard work you put in. I'm happy for you, Master. Alright, uh... I guess now we can just clear out the map. Imagine Gawain's frustration in the next run when he loses to a big titty fox girl. <laughs> Hey, Gawain, I guess fox hunting isn't your forte, huh? How does it feel that I've bagged a fox more easily than you did? Oh, sh shut up! <laughs> oh, that run's gonna be fun, I feel. Alright, um... Lancelot was better at chasing vixens. Ayy! Psychological.
having some rotten luck with this enemy. Fragment to top of Archer. And I guess I'll have to use the rest of my um, crystal fragments. I have a question for Silver. If you did, did a hard boss with friends and you got epic loot, how would you feel if the boss got back up, evolved, and had a whole new moveset? And if phase two killed you, you lose the loot. How would you feel about that? Ooh. That does sound pretty brutal. If you beat a boss phase one, you got the loot. And if you had the chance to equip it, save your game, and... Well, safer game if possible. I doubt in an MMO it's possible, but you know. If you were able to beat phase one, grab the loot, save your game, and then engage in phase two, then I think that's actually kind of reasonable. As, as long as you get like that chance to catch your breath. If you just have a cutscene and then immediately go to phase two, then whew, that might be a little rough. It would be online, there is no saving. Yeah, that wouldn't be much better. All right, let's see. Uh, hmm.
I want my game to be as hard as a game of chess against a pigeon. <laughs> See, there's a difference between a game being difficult and a game being cheap. I think I'll leave it at that and head to the exit. the floors, now it's just one last day before the elimination battle. <laughs> I don't plan on having it be a revolving slot of common items and epic items. That would be, as the kids say, a dick move. It'll all be epic loot, you just need to earn it. I'll even make it a bit more fair by making the loot usable in the second phase. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you get the chance to equip the loot and use it in the second phase, then I think that might actually be kind of fair. Like, maybe, say, for plot reasons, uh, the enemy evolves into its second phase form, none of the other weapons will do any damage to it, so you need one of the epic loot drops uh, in order to bring down its defenses to make it easier to fight, to make it possible to fight. As long as you don't have to, like, freaking rely on it to do all the damage. You can just use it to, like, deactivate a special barrier that was preventing it from taking damage in the first place so that for a turn or two, everybody can attack. You know, things like that. The epic loot will only help a little. It can be beaten with low-level stuff with time, but the epic loot gives a little help. Mmm. -hmm. So you can still make it challenging. Okay. Silver, I'm glad that yesterday went so well. I trust you did what you needed to do. Reen is waiting for me in her usual spot. Her pale skin gleams white in the gentle beaming light. Yesterday, we struck a strong blow against Gawain, so it's possible to be positive about the finals. Tomorrow is the seventh and final elimination battle. I never thought I'd be standing on equal ground with Leo and Gawain, but thanks to Reen, it's a reality. Those words of thanks are on my mind as I look at Reen. What? Hey, is there something on my face? Reen frantically wipes a hand over her face. It looks so funny that I burst out laughing. And when I do, Reen... What are you laughing at? You... you idiot! And to think, I figured you'd be seriously concerned here about what Leo said. 
I spent time wondering if Leo's philosophy had merit. However, just as Reen said before, it's not as if what he says must absolutely be true. I realized after finding him that as strong as Leo is, he's missing something critical. That's why I can surely win against Leo. Hm. I'm glad you think so, but talk is cheap. You better make good on your words. I want to base every enemy on things in the IRL world. Snakes, ants, scorpions, beetles, like fire ants would be on fire, centipedes would be giant bosses, wasps would be... Well, you can imagine the nightmares. Yeah. Wasps and hornets living together. There's a nightmare for you. Reen says this and smiles. Seeing that smile reinvigorates me to win and return to her, no matter what. That and... Do you remember what I said before? About finding a way to get out? The odds are 50-50 as if that'll happen or not. And that's only if things go well. Once the Holy Grail War is over, promise me that you'll contact me. I don't care how or from where. This is the address I'm using for the war. I won't change it for three days. Embarrassment colors Reen's face as she sends her email address to my terminal. But why? Ignoring the fact that I still have to defeat Leo, I'm still nothing but random bits of data. Isn't it kind of, well, ridiculous to treat something like me as a real human being? Imagine a giant hornet splitting apart and changing like a transformer. That is literally the mechanic, hey, hey of Beast Wars. You're an idiot. I've already told you that it doesn't matter to me. Clone or copy, it doesn't matter. You are you, regardless of where you came from or how you came to be. You're soft-hearted and sentimental, and it's a reminder of how people really should be. No, it's not ridiculous. You are alive, so start thinking about life after the Holy Grail War. Defeating Leo will bring the wrath of the Harway family down on you. Doesn't that scare you at all? Oh, I never thought about that. If the Western plutocrats target someone, they'd be as good as dead outside the Holy Grail War. Right? Don't worry, I'll watch over you. After all, I'm pretty much in the same boat as you. Be afraid to depend on me once all of this is over. I'll protect you no matter what. I tilt my head in puzzlement. Not only is she sure I'll beat Leo, she's making plans for afterward. I think she's getting way too ahead of herself. What? Isn't this the obvious thing to do? And wipe that oh what was me look off your face. Helping another person is a big deal, right? And of course you had to go and do just that. To help another person is to take a certain amount of responsibility for their life. Remember that it's much harder to try and keep someone alive than to stand by and watch them die. I see. Such an act couldn't be done without compassion. And to save a life is to share in it. Alright. All I can do now is prepare and face what comes. I only get this one chance at life. Though saving a life is a great responsibility, it's far better to save a life than to take one. That's right. That's why I'll do everything I can to help you. And it's all I can do right now. Green then turns away while continuing to mumble to herself. That's right. I may not have anywhere to go after this, but I swear I will return to this spot and... Alright. The sky's going dark. I'm nervous that I've forgotten something. Making everything I've done so far be for naught. This is the final evening, Master. You haven't forgotten the cypher keys, any training, or an alteration of the soul, have you? Hearing familiar words from my servant calms me. I'd really like to save myself the embarrassment of losing my default in the finals. Just in case, I should check the cypher key display on my terminal. Also, I need to finish all of my other preparations today. Visiting the commissary, performing an alteration of the soul, training in the arena, it's all necessary. I should do everything I need to. I can't be too careful, either. Alright, uh... 
first floor. Taiga! I found this. Were you able to get it this time? The object that grants wishes? Tiger Thermos. Yes, this is my precious. Take this plushie in return. No, I insist that you have it. We get the Tiger plushie. There it is, right by Archer's head. It's the discount Monokuma, the prototype Monokuma. Folder completion? Many masters and servants are alike in some ways, but not to the level in which you and I resemble one another. The enthusiasm of my master is terrifying. <laughs> I cannot hope to compete with your devotion to avarice, but be careful. The line between collector and obsessive hoarding crazy person is a fine one. For example, you could turn into one of those people who won't be satisfied until they owned everything. Even I could never face myself that much. In fact, I'd have to insist on the cancellation of our contract. This from a guy who hoards swords. Just saying. Alright, down to the chapel. Let's get Archer those rank up buffs. Uh, let's see. Boom. Boom. Sakura say anything special? Do your best all the way till the end. That's right, I still have Sakura's amazing lunch. Did I go say anything new? I must thank you for helping me with all of my requests. All that's left is the final battle. Did 
Didn't mean to do that, but okay. Okay, how about no? I need to more, be more vigilant with my save stating. Digilent? Diligent. Digilent isn't a word. So far, I 
think I'll get a couple more of these uh, claustrophobia guys. I'm gonna say my big nitpick of this game would be that for the attack skills to land a hit, I'm surprised they didn't count as part of your chain combo. But at the same time, thinking about it, I guess that would make it a little too good. Made a good read. I'm 
using up my magic crystal fragments. I've got plenty of ether crystals at least, so Archer should definitely be topped up on it as far as health is concerned. Good breeds. Yeah, I made mean, a good read. <laughs> ah. Not the best read, but we take those. No. This should finish him Oh, 
to try this again. A pure ether. And an ether fragment. I've got plenty of those right now, so...
I guess I'm good. I might be underleveled for the final boss, but... I think that's as much uh, grinding as I'll get. got one last night together in this fake world. Hmm. When I think back on it, you've really been through a lot. But we had some good times. Nah, I'll spare you the flattery. It's all in the past anyway. Well, tomorrow's the elimination battle. I don't have any final words of wisdom for you. Just command me like the master you are. Always courageous, always seeking answers. Target level 35, I believe I am currently level 38, so I should have a pretty good chance of getting through this. Alright. You're facing the final curtain. The final elimination battle. How do you feel, Master? My answer is obvious. Why even bother asking? I'm here because I've accumulated victories and crushed dreams. Because of the cost to others, I can't even imagine failure. Leo War myself. The one whose wish the Holy Grail will grant will be chosen today. Ah, uh, yes. There was a certain young master who entered this tournament and has grown significantly. At first, this master appeared to be a sacrificial lamb, but instead fought on those wobbly legs. I may be an agent of the system, but your fight rouses my interest. Is your case a happy accident, or a genuine miracle in hundreds, thousands of years of masters? How perverse for this AI to be based on a clergyman. Now go. Show me the true strength of your determination and desire. I'll wait on the first floor. Finished. Father Kotamine departs. The elimination battle is here. I'm about to face my strongest opponent yet. I'll make some final preparations. That means getting outfitted at the commissary and sorting out information in my room. All right, let's start with sorting out the information. The day has finally arrived, the day of the final battle. The way to the Holy Grail will open once this last fight is over. It's down to Leo and me. Whose wish will be granted? I have no intention of falling now, but today is the day where our fates will be decided. Before the elimination battle begins, I should go through all of the information I've accumulated. First off, the name of Leo's servant. I better make sure I have his name right before I do anything else. Gawain Mordred Lancelot. Uh, Mordred was in Apocrypha. Lancelot was introduced in Grand... No. Berserker Lancelot was introduced in Fate Zero. I believe it was Saber Lancelot that was introduced in Grand Order. So, Gawain. The servant in burnished white armor. His name was given as Gawain. A knight of great loyalty linked to the legend of the Round Table who guards Leo with tireless vigilance. <laughs> Banana! <laughs> Rock that day, banan ah. <laughs> I remember the first time we crossed swords in the arena. As per his story, his strength is legendary. Wielding a sword that shines like the sun, he barred my way with unshakable resolve. The name of his sword is uh, 
the Sword of Absolute Victory, the Resurrected Sword of Vi Victory, Talisman of the Broken Commandments. Uh, I don't think there is a Talisman of the Broken Commandments, because I don't think there was ever a Moses servant. Uh, I believe the Sword of Absolute Victory is Excalibur, so... Uh, Galantine being the sister sword would be the resurrected sword of victory. Right. Also called Galatine. It is the sister sword of Excalibur and a weapon of great power when used by Gawain. At first, there was no way I could meet the stroke of the sword infused with the sun's heat. Now, the attribute that made Gawain one of his mightiest of knights was his unique constitution. When the sun was in the sky, all of his abilities were amplified to a significant degree. His noble phantasm alone makes him immensely powerful, but with this attribute, he was almost invincible. What was the name of that ability? Numeral of the Six, the Reckoning of Victories, and Numeral of the Saint. Right, it was the Numeral of the Saint, the ability that ties his powers to the sun at its most powerful when the clock strikes noon. But by hacking the arena and cutting off its light, I was not only able to wound him, but also cripple this ability of his to some degree. All that is to be done now is see how close Archer can get to Leo. I've made it all this way. Just one more. Just one more victory. Then I can get my wish granted by the Holy Grail. The answer that I have sought throughout this fight. Archer say anything different? So our next opponent is that young king. He doesn't seem the type to use cheap tricks. I guess it's one of those things have come to a head situations. At this point I have nothing left to say. Whether we live or die is all up to you. All I can do now is follow your lead. Alright, let's leave. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, I don't have any skill points, so no real point in going to the chapel right now. If I go to the commissary, though, I will need to stock up on those magic crystal fragments. Interestingly, if Leo's brother had lived, he might have won. Being an invisible first strike killer is hard to counter with just brute force, which is all Leo has. Yeah. sell. Not really. Character background. One of the major knights mentioned in the Arthurian legends, often thought to be King Arthur's nephew. A knight said to be the equal of Sir Lancelot, Gawain was frequently at odds with Lancelot due to his slaying both of Gawain's brothers. Although pure of heart and loyal beyond question, it was Gawain's all-consuming hatred that not only led to him being stripped of his knighthood, but also led to the downfall of King Arthur himself. Although his hostility inevitably led to his death at the hands of Sir Lancelot, he realized that it was his own lack of virtue that led to Sir Lancelot's betrayal and the defeat of King Arthur at the Battle of Camelon Hill. Up until his death, Sir Gawain was considered a paragon of knighthood, chivalrous, loyal, and gallant. Even as King Arthur became a legend, Gawain was content to stay in the background, doing his duty regardless of whether his efforts were acknowledged or not. 
in reward for his gallantry and loyalty to Arthur, as well as his vengeful forgiveness of Sir Lancelot, Gawain was resurrected as a legendary soul and, freed from the sins of his past, has once again reclaimed his role as the Knight of the Sun. Alright. It's time to force that sun to set. I've been waiting your arrival. Are you ready? If it is your wish, I will open the way to the Colosseum. Now, please present the final cipher key. So, young master, who will have their wish granted? You or the scion of the Harway family? I will be here waiting for the one who successfully manages to reach the Holy Grail. Alright, final round. Kill or be killed. Finally, the battle I've been waiting for. Are you moved by the gravitas of the moment as well? What do you think? I hope you reciprocate my emotions. You stir up something inside me when we fight. It would please me if you were capable of feeling what I feel. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I can't contain my joy. You've gone through a metamorphosis. In the prelims, you were bland, unmistakable from an NPC. But now you've transformed into a warrior worthy of arresting my full attention. It was a long road. Yes, you've taken to the battlefield like a flower to rich soil. But the time has come for me to pluck that flower before its growth becomes unsightly. Strange. You haven't grown. I'm not sure what you're trying to imply, but it's true that I have not changed. No one expects me to. In a way, doesn't it seem like fate that you and I were paired for the final battle? Unchanging me versus the steadily improving you? Like the moon is looking to resolve the timeless clash of innate talent versus self-improvement. This feels rather strange. I want to fight you as soon as possible, but I'd also like to speak with you longer. I'm grateful that your defeat was reserved for me alone. <laughs> you make it sound like a done deal. Do you know which of the seven cardinal sins is the deadliest? Pride, isn't it? But conviction is a virtue, is it not? I wouldn't get so worked up, Archer. No. I'll win no matter what. You know just what to say to make me anticipate our battle even more fervently. It was definitely worth the wait. With a gnashing of metal, the elevator grinds to a halt. Is it just me, or this time did the reverberation last longer and sound heavier than usual? In any case, this is it. On to the final battlefield. It's time. I'm aware this is inappropriate considering the situation, but I have one last thing to say. Thank you for making it this far. 
Now, let's defend our ideologies, Seventh Master. Here we go, last round. The moment has finally arrived, Silver. Although I'm afraid I'll miss you, I have to keep going. This is it, Gawain. Utilize your sword's full capacity. For me. I have waited for those words. My body will be your blade, and I will cut a path to the throne for you. Not gonna happen, Knight of the Sun. Your master's lacking something. Lacking something? You're mistaken, Archer. I'm already the king. That's what I'm talking about, Leo. You've always gotten everything you wanted. You've never known defeat. That's why you don't know what it's like to struggle for what we don't have, to mourn loss. There's no hope for a king who has no comprehension of what it's like for a human being to suffer. That's enough, Archer. I won't tolerate any insults against my king. Your opinion is biased towards the masses anyway. You've done the opposite and been too compassionate. Your very status as a legendary soul is questionable. Leo, you're a perfect king. There's no need for you to worry about the feudal emotions he's enthralled with. That's the kind of power only the weak and those who seek salvation want. It's useless to a true king. No. I get it. You want him to live and die as a king, huh? You're loyal to a fault, I'll give you that. But Lord Gawain, you're about to repeat the same mistake. King Arthur didn't give up his humanity when he became king. Don't you think that's important? Of course. But that king and Leo are different. I devoted myself to Leo's reign. I swore I would be the knight who served him his whole life. That's what chivalry is. I can't withdraw a sword that has already been levied. Knowing what you know, you still chose chivalry? <laughs> Pathetic. I've heard enough out of you. No more mindless blather. My body, my mind, my sword, all belongs to my king. Now I shall burn away your miserable lives. True king exists for his people, though, not the other way around. The king fights for his people because without them, he is no king, just a man giving orders to an empty hall. Exactly. Uh, hmm. Let me see. Let's start with fortification. And actually, let's play it safe and switch over to the other safe state slot. Uh, boom. Ouch. Me. Those are some pretty bad reads. Ow. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Rewinding.
Okay, that's a better turn. Alright, uh, let's see. Remove that buff. That was pretty good. Uh, I have a few elixirs. I have a couple elixirs. I might as well use it. Right. UBW ready to go. And now Gawain has his own noble phantasm ready, so. I think this is a time where I would use it. <sighs> I am the bone of my sword. Steel is my body, fire is my blood. With these hands I have created over a thousand blades. Unknown to death, nor known to life, have withstood pain to create many weapons, yet these hands will never hold anything. So as I pray, unlimited blade works. I just realized I screwed up. Actually. Rewind, rewind, rewind. 
I forgot to heal him up. Jesus, okay. Actually, you know what? Let's try this. Ritual three times to pull off the reality marble. Crystal. Jesus! Alright, fine. Alright, fine. I think I'll go ahead. I think we'll go ahead and use an elixir on that one. Let's try it that way. There we go. And then on, 
I believe the last turn of UBW, we go all out. That should tear him up. Pretty much the only thing that would take me down is if in one of his earlier actions of the turn is when he used his double phantasm. And with that, I win! feel my fingers. My arms and legs won't move. There's no strength in them. Ariana. I don't understand. Even though my heart has been pierced through, it feels like the hole is filled. Astonished, Leo remains unmoving. This must be a truly unbelievable conclusion to him. While staring at his small hand, Leo's breath becomes thin and short. His heart will stop moving soon. He doesn't seem to be trying to escape from the pain, though. Uh, I see. What I couldn't believe was that I'd reached my limit. Leo smiles with his admission. I never thought I'd reach my limit. I wasn't even capable of imagining what defeat was. I didn't think I was flawless. I just had no fear. The way normal people's hearts quiver, mine never did. His quiet words are sorrowful, but a smile spreads across Leo's mouth. He's found some happiness, even in the arms of defeat and demise. His joy is something very human and trivial. Achievement. His body's coloring slowly darkens. I already know what will happen. I've seen this scene play out before. The king-to-be will vanish. He'll disappear, like the gods have decided he should never have been. This feeling that's come over me. It fears the unreasonable, and rejects the irrational. One more time. I won't lose next time. These are complex feelings. I don't want to give up. That's a compelling feeling. But all of them are positive. I feel bitterness and grief as well, and I fear meeting death. And this must be courage. I had not understood the real meaning of any of these feelings. I'm such a fool. Someone like me could never have led the human race. Gawain. You knew all along that I lacked something necessary to become a true king. My lord. No, my king. I... Yes, I know, Gawain. Though you knew what I needed most was to experience defeat, you still helped me win. You gave me your loyalty and risked your life for me. You knew that I would be defeated one day, but you tended to my growth anyway. I lived so illogically, but thank you, from the bottom of my heart. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have realized. I would have seen this defeat as a fluke and coldly ignored it. My king, I would have accepted you no matter what defeats you suffered. I am your sword, your knight. Your growth is your own, however, I am 
honored to have witnessed the growth of a truly honorable king. With those words of praise, Gawain disappears. He makes no excuses and doesn't plead for his life. Of course he doesn't. He gave 100% for Leo. He had no reason to be ashamed. After watching Gawain flicker out, Leo turns back my way. He's crying. I'm afraid of going cold. This is the most frightening of human emotions. This is despair. I never even knew a basic feeling like this. His voice is bathed in sorrow. I don't know if it is sorrow for his death or the person he was. <gasps> Defeat. It was a necessary obstacle on my path to the throne. I can't retreat after coming so far down this path. Now that I know defeat, I can become a complete king. Now. I can't help thinking of mayflies. They're those insects who gain wings to fly and then die after just a day. There's nothing I can do. It's unfortunate. Then, Leo disappears, gone without a trace. I'm the only one left. An emptiness that I've never gotten used to wrenches my heart. That was the end, though. Everything is over now. It's really over. Isn't it? That one wasn't so bad. White Knight of the Round Table, widely considered to be the equal of King Arthur by many and the wielder of the lesser-known Holy Sword Galatine, Sir Gawain was fiercely loyal to the King, or more accurately, the King's Station, unlike Sir Bedivere, a trusted friend of Arthur's who wished only that he would find peace and contentment, Gawain's only concern was that Arthur maintain the throne of Britain. If King Arthur was seen as a personification of the moon, then Sir Gawain was the harbinger of the sun. He was frequently compared with Arthur. Although, Gawain himself ignored those comparisons and devoted himself to serving his king to the best of his abilities. Though loyal to the end, his irrational hatred of Sir Lancelot proved to be his and Arthur's undoing. Though Arthur, Arthur eventually forgave his wayward knight's transgressions, Sir Gawain could not find it within himself to do the same. Until the very last moments of his life, and only after being stripped of his knighthood, excommunicated from the church and causing the downfall of his sovereign king. With his dying breath, he swore that if he was ever given a second chance at life, he'd support his king no matter what. Upon being reincarnated as a servant, Gawain devotes himself completely to the goals of his master, and by doing so, hopes to gain absolution for the sins of his past. Alright. Take a nap, Archer. You earned it. And you know what? 
I think I can afford to go a little over time so that we can take care of the finale. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back to the main slot so we can save. Oop. So stay. Alright. After winning the fight, I return to the now lifeless school. Almost all the people are gone. I'm the only master. I'm the last living human in this tournament. If human is the right word. Even all the NPCs that used to be here are now gone. There's no more use for them. The Holy Grail War ends here. Only the master and servant who won the Holy Grail War remain. Plus one system anomaly. In any case, the path to the Holy Grail will open for the winner. Where could it be? While thinking about how annoying looking it for it would be. Congratulations. You have crushed the dreams of all the other magi. That is to say, you have won. The Holy Grail War ends here. A voice echoes through the speakers. It's a voice I've heard before. It was a voice I heard when I met my servant at the very end of the preliminaries. It's the guide created by the Holy Grail War system. It must be based on a real person, too. The path to the Holy Grail is open to you, Victor. Pass through the door to the battlefield once more. I still don't have any answers. Maybe they will come once I get to the Holy Grail. Do we hear anything else from Archer? Yeah, I think we can afford a little time to go longer than usual, so... <laughs> the war's over. The only thing left to do is proceed to the core of the moon cell and claim the grail. Master, you may think I'm being paranoid, but I recommend that you be prepared for anything. Based on past experiences, I'm pretty sure that this war isn't something that's going to end so easily. Go to the commissary. Oh, there's still a shop here. Uh, I've got plenty of ether. Uh, crystals and fragments, so I'm good there. student, even though you no longer have need of a teacher. Or are you that fond of me? No, I'm not. In fact, I'm pretty done with this bitter priest. But like it or not, he has always been instrumental to my, advan my training and advancement. Even though he's nothing more than an AI, I wanted to say goodbye. Hmm. You're a good student. Very well. Goodbye. Let me offer some final advice. It is not brief, but the Holy Grail won't be going anywhere. Advice? 
What advice could the father have now that the fighting is over? This isn't to guide you through a fight, but to enlighten you about what you will receive shortly. It may be fairly late in the game to ask this, but what do you know of the Holy Grail? I already know the basics to it. It's a supercomputer within the moon meant to observe, also known as the Moon Cell Automaton. It is an archive that has recorded the history of Earth, or rather mankind, since antiquity. And Magi fought to the death to determine ownership of it. Hmm. That's good for starters. Still, you need to know a few more details. As the last master, you ought to know. That crystal is the Moon Cell. Only in the past century has it become called the Holy Grail. An all-purpose wishing machine. Who decided the Moon Cell would only observe, I wonder? Forcing other functions upon what is primarily an observation device is generally impossible there. But the all-seeing eye is lacking the rest of its head. Though all-seeing, the Moon Cell is not a god. It obeys the laws of physics like everything else. Such as the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Phenomena that are not observed do not exist. By the same token, all things that are seen must be seen. Even things that are not generally considered to exist. The Moon Cell is a very complete database. It records many ifs as well. With such operational power, the Moon Cell can both elucidate the past and provide foresight. What you are heading towards is knowledge of the future. A place where every human wish and desire exists. A place to spy upon the future, on that terrible knowledge, much like what Laplace envisioned. The moon has no will of its own. Intelligence is a distortion of pure observation, after all. But if someone with a will could harness the moon cell, they would see all of their wishes granted. The validity of one's motives, or even the very presence of motive, is inconsequential. All that matters is that the winner of the Holy Grail War is strong. Just strength? An amoral priest like Kotomine would reduce human struggle to that. Does the moon cell Holy Grail desire strength? Or is that the conclusion reached by whoever created this priest? That is all. Did it help? What all of you have been crawling over is nothing more than the moon cell's surface. Go forth, reigning master. Deep in the moon, the ring of fire awaits your answer. I will wait in front of the arena. If you find it hard to leave the moon cell, come find me. You know what? Just to see. The Holy Grail War has ended, and all that remains is to proceed to where the Holy Grail lies. Upon your arrival, something's taking place that we do not understand. There's no reason for the system NPC to know anything more, but with our preparation, we should be fine. The shop and church will be usable. Go if you feel the need. If you want more training, you can feel free to use the arena as it has been reopened. You no longer have to observe the six-day prep period. Come and go as you please. So, you will go to the arena? Does it let me choose the floors? Infinite Chimeric Lunar Sea. Oh, okay. So we have like an infinite dungeon here. That's actually pretty cool. But I think I'm at a cool, uh, good enough uh, spot where I can make an attempt at the finale. Well, let's go. We've come this far. Let's see it through to the end. She seems to see no problem with coming with me. I'm not going to object. She's good to have along.
The entrance to the battlegrounds is still the same dreary elevator. The same elevator travels to the arena, but the display indicates a much greater depth. Once I'm inside, the doors close heavily and the rectangular box begins to move. the Holy Grail, and the wish the final victor is granted. The power that many magi have sought, but only one is able to obtain. I never thought someone who wasn't a magus would get it. Life's full of surprises. Or maybe it's just you, that is. Do you remember your first plea? Why is this happening? That cry of yours made me decide to become a servant in this war. In life, I never considered myself a hero. I had my doubts too, and I didn't think anyone would understand. But everyone wants to know why. It's not an uncommon question. Why was I born? Why am I fighting? We die without knowing why. That's life. You keep going because you want to know why. Truth is, we never reach answers. We just leave footprints instead. Don't be ashamed. Just keep moving forward as the victor will. I'll be by your side until you can express your wish. Now, let's do this. The final question awaits us. Reference, if I remember right on the Saber route, I did this first try. Which for a final boss is eh, kind of a joke. It's an incredibly vast room. Actually, a space so cavernous could hardly be called a room. It's also strangely barren, save for the alien object that dominates the center of the space. It resembles a giant floating eye. Although it doesn't seem threatening, it is still somewhat disconcerting. The artifact of an alien civilization, the reason for its creation is beyond human comprehension. The core of the moon cell and the base of the seraph, the holy grail of the seven heavens, responsible for creating the seven seas. And in the space where the Holy Grail is enshrined, I can feel a sense of discord and dissonance. In front of the Holy Grail is a jumble of skewed stone pillars, which only adds to the tumultuous atmosphere. On the top of that pile of stones sits the lone figure of a man. He looks to be in his late twenties at most. His expression is blank enough to be totally unmemorable. But as an NPC, he doesn't need to make an... Hey, Silver. I've been waiting for you. Congratulations, by the way. You have won the Holy Grail War. 
I'd love to have a celebration in your honor, but unfortunately, this place doesn't allow for that sort of thing. While it might not be worth what you had to do to survive this far, you'll have to make do with my applause. But allow me to say this. I approve, praise, and I'm proud of you more than I have been of anyone else. Throughout the numerous repetitions of the Holy Grail, Lord, you are by far the most extraordinary master. While he seems friendly, there's something more dangerous about him than any of my other opponents. It's a feeling of nothingness. There's something very strange about the man in front of me. Don't let your guard down. I feel the presence of a servant behind this guy. At the same time he mentions his servant, I can feel Reen tense up as she shoots a glare in his direction. Watch out, Silver! This guy isn't an NPC! He's a master! But why would a master be here? The war is over, and the only master left standing should be you! Well, to be absolutely accurate, I could just as easily say that you're a master who shouldn't be here, too. How could a master who was defeated still be alive and present in this place? I must look into it later. Well, that's an issue for another day. At least one rule will still be enforced. Only one master may leave. And unfortunately, you are the one who will disappear. I advise you to enjoy what little time you have left. Now that's settled. I'm pretty sure the question on your mind is, what are you, right? A pertinent question worthy of an answer. Of course, I am both an NPC and a master. To be more accurate, I should say, I was. Was? You mean you became a master after being an NPC? That's... She briefly glances my way, her eyes wide with shock. I suppose a more thorough explanation is necessary. The story's kind of long, but please bear with me. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Twice H. Peaceman. But please, just call me Twice. Twice? I thought you being a cyber ghost was just an urban legend. But to think that's actually true. Everything I've learned about you paints you as a person who hated war and was dedicated to saving lives. This massacre. You of all people should detest this war. But considering how you are now, it's... So that's how history sees me. That I detested war? And that part is definitely true. I hate war, and will not tolerate its existence in any form. Not even the Harways are exempt from this fact. However, that truth only scratches the surface of my beliefs. Much like the Moon Cell, it seems that a single well-known function has erroneously defined my true ideals. It began when I was a student, and obsessed with the history of humanity. I will never forget the many shocking realizations I received during the course of my studies. The betrayals that make up history, combined with severe shell shock, gave him an abnormal hatred of war. Allow me to clarify. By him, I mean twice peaceful. And he was, in fact, incredibly ill. When he saw any image depicting war, he was overcome with overwhelming panic attacks. It was almost as if he would get severe heart palpitations and his blood pressure would skyrocket. From that day, he, meaning me, was consumed with an unease that became almost painful in its intensity. Even after becoming a scientist, he still risked death to save others because of that unbearable pain. That's the whole of it. What drove him during his time in the mortal coil was not a sense of righteousness. What drove me was one simple question. Why was the I the only one who seemed to hate war? As I said, twice was ill. There was no reason for him to risk his life so foolishly on the battlefield. Why did I involve myself in war? Was it to understand it better? Especially considering the effect war had on me? Even while struggling with those questions, my mortal self still irrationally kept going into battle. 
and in the year 1999, a horrible neurological disease broke out in the city, located in the Far East. Based on the available evidence, the cause of the outbreak was a biological weapon created by terrorists. Twice was called to the city to treat the victims of the attack when he was caught in a major attack himself. According to records made available to the public, the death toll was set at 5,000 people. The moon cell puts the real count at 8,200. As you can see, the government underreported the number attacked. I can see the exhaustion in his eyes. He seems to think his story is no more than an amusing anecdote. Although it's hard to tell if he's amused by the government's possible cunning or total incompetence. Anyway, that's when I, no, the person I am patterned after, died. Twice ended up one of those 8200. Something strange. I remember seeing the place where he died, as if I too was one of those many victims. I can recall the sight of buildings set aflame, but when I was twice, it was a scene that I had experienced before. It was then that the mortal twice, the person I was, recaptured the repressed memories of his childhood. In the 1970s, there was a clash of ethnic groups, arranged by major powers as a war by proxy. Twice was orphaned in the conflict. The place I remember was hell. Everything around me was collapsing. Everything fell without any sense of morality and without any acknowledgement of the value of life. And there lies its Young Twice must have concluded that life itself was truly a miracle. All that remained of that epiphany I've already told you. Anyway, Twice was adopted and became a doctor. And though I tried to forget the past, that one fundamental truth was burned forever into my soul. Twice despised war more, and it became his intent to kill war itself. I got involved in war in order to end it. However, at the core of my very being wasn't a denial of the meaning of war. It wasn't that at all. Twice had seen many battlefields, the never-ending hell, the horrific evil perpetuated by humanity. A group of soldiers made to fight against an army many times their size. That was far more experienced than supplied. Forced to flee from gorillas, a girl of five travels on foot through a jungle that few could hope to survive. Innocent victims of violence who rebuilt their village and their lives without help from anyone. I find that odd. Even though I hated war, I saw a great deal of strength emerge from the conflicts I witnessed. Now that I think on it, the mortal me was the same. All of Twice's great works were born of war. The many revelations, the uncounted number of rescues. None would have happened without the hell that is war. All the mortal me really did was bring back a number of things from the depths of hell. And in the end, I was a victim of a terrorist attack. But as I was dying, it all came back to me. I saw the burned fields of my home and recalled the tenacity that helped me go on, even as everyone else died. Yes, three seconds before my heart stopped, I finally received an answer to my question. It was never denied. What drove that twice repeatedly into hell was because I, I who eventually fell victim to violence, could no longer consider war the ultimate folly of mankind. Nothing can be hidden from the moon cell, and it records all it observes, including my final thoughts. As time went on, I was reborn as an NPC based on the record of my mortal life, just like any other NPC here. They may appear human, but are nothing more than puppets playing assigned roles. I was the same. However, he managed to gain self-awareness. But how? And why? Maybe interacting with so many masters combined with my skills as a spirit hacker pushed me into consciousness. More likely, it was just an anomaly born from a single near impossibility. How it happened, I cannot say. However, 
Once I gained true consciousness, the only thing I could do was act as twice Peaceman would. The dream that I saw as I died, the ideal that existed only in my mind, I now exist only to make it a reality. So what was the dream that the mortal twice saw as he died? Endless war, of course. To see mankind engage in a grand war of mutual extinction. He says this last statement in a matter-of-fact tone. There's no hint of insanity visible in his eyes. Naturally, and with obvious sincerity, he can somehow utter such a statement of absolute madness. The future has been corrupted. That is the conclusion I've come to after studying the Moon Cell's records. Anyone with a brain can see that the world is doomed. Humankind has long since passed its adolescent stage. Man was still maturing in the 1900s. A balance was struck between penury and prosperity, but it didn't last. The period of immaturity ended, but the golden age that should have followed never occurred. You do realize this, right? What has happened to the planet and its people should never have come to be. The spirit of mankind has stagnated, just as the world has. The future is rotting away like overripe fruit. When that fruit should be at its best, it has fallen into the ground. That's not the way history should be. That is how Reen and Leo describe the world. A place of peace, stupefying stagnation, and entropy. But is war really the answer? Because it is the most efficient way for mankind to progress. Stability and stasis only act to preserve the species. If the objective of modern man is merely survival, then there is no reason for them to exist. In my previous life, a great many lives and resources were consumed for the sake of convenience. Why? What was the need for such prosperity? Prosperity is just an illusion and exists only for its own sake. I expect that you agree with me. Humans are capricious creatures that must feed on dreams to evolve. The preliminaries illustrate this truth. In an artificial peace, ignorant aggressors revel in idleness. Humans can only mature after breaking free from their idleness. That seems to be the case for you. And now, ideologies are based on the detritus of an ignoble and forgotten past. That loss can't be overcome. I cannot allow such ideas to become the foundation of the next epic of human civilization. Don't you agree? If the future isn't worth the suffering of the past, that would make man mere murderers. For the humans who lived in the distant past, the future that man is now planning cannot be accepted. The future that will be is a mistake. Humanity has not spent countless lives for the society that is to come. But we cannot reverse time. Since going back is impossible, there is no choice but to move forward. With that in mind, we will recreate the wars of the past and revise the history of the last hundred years. By having everyone fight in a war of survival, mankind's consciousness will be forced into the correct path. My wish has become a firm conviction. As the winner of the Holy Grail War, your existence is proof of that. Come again? Hold up a second, what in the hell is that supposed to mean? Reen looks at me with flames in her eyes, as if demanding an explanation, but I'm just as in the dark as she is. Originally, the Holy Grail War was a way for the Moon Cell to gather data. It didn't even have a name at first. The Moon Cell only wanted the best data samples. Having a war of survival was a good way to separate the chaff. However, up until now, the magi who came here made excuses for their actions, but still killed, then fled. Truly an atrocity, wouldn't you say? Until I won, this world was buried under a mountain of corpses. After all, being an NPC, I get the luxury of continuing on even if I die. I watched their fights as an NPC, and when I became conscious, I fought battles of my own, weak though I was. After several dozen fights, I finally reached this elevated seat. 
after that, my story becomes simpler. Manipulating the rules of this place, I created the Holy Grail War. A battle of survival from which only a single person may emerge victorious. I remade this world into a place where the limits of human potential can be pushed beyond one's imagination. And then you appeared. The weakest master in the tournament, you managed to defeat the king of the world. You were totally unsuited for this ordeal in the beginning, just as I was. As a nameless figure drawn from masses, you become the one in whose hands rests the fate of the world. Your soul's been tempered by crisis and conflict. Your new strength is a testament to the potential of man. When mankind reaches the heights you have, they will move forward, clearing a path for those yet to come. Now, it's time for you to claim the grail for your own. You've earned the right to show the world the true path. Shout out, so that all can hear you say that war is necessary. That humanity can and must evolve quickly. Just input this one little phrase into the moon cell. Don't stop. After that, you can do whatever you wish. Whether you become a king or a god is up to you. You have my blessing, as your choice will bring endless war. The wounds suffered by humanity are after losing countless lives in endless conflicts run deep. And if the only reward for such suffering is stagnation, then humanity deserves to be cast into a new void. Some sacrifices cannot go unheeded. Mankind must be inflicted with wounds that they will never forget. I actually understand where you're coming from. As I remain paralyzed by doubt, Reen begins to speak, her apparent calm belied by the heat in her eyes. Your story was interesting, but it left one question unanswered. It's about you winning the war in the past. You never once mentioned making a wish on the Holy Grail. Why? Why have him make your wish for you? An excellent question. The answer is that I can't. If I touch the Holy Grail, my wish would be rejected. According to the Moon Cell, my existence is considered nothing more than an irregular data stream. I can fool the low-level processes, but if I access the core, I'd be seen as an NPC and immediately deleted. My victories would mean nothing. I need a legitimate master. Someone who can make my wish a reality. Anomalous data would be deleted. What emotion did her words express? Her mumbling sounded very much like a dejected sigh. The girl beside me shuts her eyes for a moment and then directs her gaze at twice, as if to deny the obvious. That's why I've stopped here. I've been waiting for years at the gate to the core, awaiting one I deem worthy. Upon reflection, I wasted a great deal of time. I was able to plant the seeds of war on Earth from here by manipulating and manufacturing information. But it was a case of too little too late. Also, my methods were unreliable and on too small of a scale. Instances of terrorism and violence have skyrocketed recently. So you're the cause of it all! With full access to the Moon Cell's records and my ability to divine the future, I can bring about Armageddon. Of course, I don't intend for everyone to die. I simply wish to instigate a war that anyone can survive. You can see it through the gate. There lies the moon's core, an object made from the purest photonic crystal. The results of the simulations of Earth's future run by the moon cell are stored as light within the core. The one who reaches the core has the right to choose the course of the future from infinite possibilities. Alright, you know what? We're running a little low on time, so I think I'm going to go ahead and speed this through. So long story short, he doesn't seem like it, but he's gone insane. I know that war isn't the answer. Yeah, the 
Yeah. My opinion. Oh wait, hold on. What was that? Sir, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Do you think I'm evil and should be eradicated? My opinion? Discussing such things as a servant may be a bit callow even for myself. Archer flashes a cynical smile tinged with obvious malice, as if he's come face to face with a sworn enemy. As a legendary soul known to cut down all who stand in his way, regardless of who they are or what they believe, Archer points his blade at twice, a humane expression on his face. As a servant, I have no answer for you. But if you insist on a reply, I will do so as the human I once was. I've met many fools like you, hell-bent on destroying the present in an attempt to resurrect the past. Like those others, you try to justify your selfish desire for control by cloaking it in the guise of altruism. Yeah. You're not satisfied with any result that ends in loss? Your immaturity and weakness makes me laugh. So you asked me if I thought you were evil, right? You deluded, spiteful ghost. That's exactly right. Your misguided ideals are nothing more than the corrupted logic of one long dead. You are the epitome of evil. A lifeless shade who'd sacrifice the innocent for your own selfish goals. And regardless of what my master thinks, I will be the one to eliminate you once and for all. As a master, I agree with Archer's declaration, though for different reasons. This man cannot be forgiven. I don't understand. Unlike any other human, you were the embodiment of everything I believe in. That might seem to be the case, but even if we walk the same path, our feelings may be completely opposite. I must have died in the same incident that took twice. However, I learned different lessons in my death. Sadly for you, you cannot escape. Only a single master may leave the moon cell once they've made it here. Once the participants have been reduced to one, permission is granted to leave the Seraph. This is one thing I cannot change. The Moon Cell has made this rule a fundamental requirement for entry. In other words, there's still you and me. As long as both of us exist, neither can escape this place. So there's no path open to you but the one that leads to the Holy Grail. And given your capricious nature, I can't relax yet. There's no guarantee your potential will shine through. The world has reached its limit as well. Soon it will be too late to overcome the stagnation of man. However, twice Peaceman is wrong. If the moon cell automatically erased irregular data, I cannot go inside. Just like twice, if I pass through that gate, I will be eliminated. And if twice somehow wins, he will gain nothing. In the end, no one will win this fight. But even knowing that, I'm not big on brainwashing, as it can end in self-destruction, but your spirit might survive the process. It doesn't matter to me if you resist. If you want your wish to come true, you'll have to defeat me anyway. And such is destiny. At the end of things, this is the conclusion we arrive at. Now then, it's time to bring this chapter in the Holy Grail War to a close. To the victor goes the spoils. That is the way of humanity. Something that will never change. It is by fighting for one's life that a person's spirit will grow and become stronger. It may well be a malevolent force in regards to man, but life is an endless cycle that will never end. I have been bestowed this power not only to protect one person, but to preserve the whole. Look upon my works and despair, servant. For here comes my salvation, straight from the Moon Cell's records. Oh, so you think you're Ozyman Dias? Come, legendary soul of salvation. The answer to all, a soul entity to escape the agony of existence. Motherfucking Buddha. If it is for the purpose of creating the path mankind will follow to Dharmata, and thus to enlightenment, then I will come forth to grant salvation to all things, and guide them with the might of my Vajra. 
And thus cometh the Messiah. I, for one, wasn't expecting such an exalted servant. What's wrong? Seriously, you need to relax. After making it this far, nothing should make you nervous. From your very first fight, nothing has been easy for you. The entire war has been one long struggle. However, you have something now that you didn't then. Understand that and there's no way you'll lose to him. As for Twice Peaceman, it will be by our hands that he and his delusions will be cut down. The words of my servant serve to encourage me. And in the end, Twice is right about one thing. There are some things that conflict can help to grow. And the most important to me is the bond that now exists between me and my servant. Regardless of the strength of the enemy or the consequences failure will have on the future, I won't back down. I will face this one last battle with the one who has been with me from the beginning by my side. Alright, facing off against the Buddha. Now, I gotta act fast because this is on a time limit. Alright. Uh, let's see. Notification. Uh, Ray of Weekend. Uh, wings of the Crane. Oh, this is gonna hurt. The next few attacks will build up my projection significantly. Okay, timer is counting down. I uh, don't have any. Okay, strength down.
let's go ahead. Good start. I am the bones tail swept by I have no to the great Lord help with the pain. Yeah, yeah, so man have will so as I pray. Unlimited blade works. Wanga Kushua Neshe Kru. Okay, good break. Ah, crap. Okay, we're actually going through this pretty quickly. counter. Okay, that actually wasn't a bad read other than that. Thing I save stated.
Gonna do it. <laughs> oh, right. I need more projection. In that case. because I have a feeling on that one code cast uh, twice is gonna try to seal skills again so just because we're at the finale. dead he's almost dead but i've got to act fast because i've only got like a few more turns left before uh, shoot 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 all right uh magic crystal sphere Counter. Nope. Not taking that. You know what? against that. Okay. Now, how do I want to finish this? Screw it. I've got five pure ethers. Let's use them. Got him. And his timer is almost finished. I've got to do this now. Uh, 
pure ether. This should do it. And it's done. I can hear the sounds of battle. And though I've been defeated many times, it's still painful all the same. But I have no regrets. Just as life is an endless cycle, war too will endure. You are proof of that. Twice, who even now still holds tightly to his beliefs, slowly begins to fade away like all of the others. But whether he is following his own rules or those of the Moon Cell, I cannot say for sure. Now, go and touch the Holy Grail. You'll come to understand many things once you do. Wantonly consuming lives, thriving without a purpose, our future blossoms like a flower by the roadside. Whether that turns out to be right or wrong, I would like for you to see and judge with your own eyes. If we were both truly righteous or not. And in an instant, I thought I saw something that was truly him but it might have been just an illusion. Without any time to contemplate what was happening, Twice Peaceman passes into oblivion. His servant, too, will soon join him in the void. Without exception, all life will perish. All living things are trapped in a cycle of suffering and death. The one who sought enlightenment through strength and perseverance still has an untainted soul. But there is more than one path. Just as good and evil have value, the beauty of the world will endure. King of blood-drenched battle, in Nirvana, let us witness the end of the world, for there lies your salvation. With an expression much like his master's, the serpent fades away like a flower losing its petals. The only person to have escaped the cycle of suffering, seen by some as a savior of the spirit of humanity. I see now. He did not support twice his ideals. Instead, he was showing compassion for the soul of the human known as Twice Peaceful. Okay. All right then, what should we do now? Rian asks her question in a brittle yet cheerful tone trying to maintain her aloof attitude. And before you say anything, don't waste your time worrying about me. The moment I lost Lancer, no, the second I entered the Holy Grail War, I was prepared to. I try to express my concern, but she only silently points to the gate in the middle of the room. Her silence speaks volumes. As twice said earlier, the moment that any anomalous data is detected in that dimension, it will be deleted. She refrains from speaking, as she is all too aware of the consequences to come. However, even if I am to be deleted, there should still be a small window of opportunity. Time enough to sneak in a modest wish. To extinguish the remaining fires of war that twice had set ablaze to put an end to the senseless bloodshed of the Holy Grail War once and for all. The Moon Cell Automaton, the very mind of God. I will seal it away so that no one will ever be able to access it again. And to also return her, the last true survivor, safely to her mortal existence. 
A number of wishes race through my mind, but I won't have the time to ask for them all. I can only ask for the most important of my desires. But any wish I make will be influenced by the experiences I gained fighting in this war. I make my way to the Holy Grail, the object that is both bane and boon to the one fortunate enough to survive. Regret at not being the winning master has never been stronger than it is now. No matter how much I want to force the issue, since I'm not the victor, I cannot go near the Holy Grail. With one last sigh, she retreats into silence. I silently thank her for not making an already painful parting worse than it already is, and continue making my way to the gate. And then I reach out to touch the Holy Grail, the very core of the moon cell. Well, I mean, I really hate what I'm about to say. It sounds like I'm making excuses for myself. But things could have ended worse. I probably would have lost it twice. Not due to lack of skill, but of heart. That's why I'm glad you're the one who made it to the end. I want you to know that I truly mean that. Before me stands the Holy Grail. I slowly extend my hand and place it on the core of the boon cell. instant I make contact with it, I am drawn inside the Holy Grail. To be more accurate, I am absorbed into it like water being absorbed by a sponge. In the short time before I'm erased from existence, my consciousness is immersed into the moon cell. I can see everything that exists within it. Every piece of information, observation, conclusion. The sheer volume of information and ideas stored in the moon cell forms an intricate collage that no human could decipher, though I sense a pattern. In fact, I cannot say that Twice's interpretation of human history, as recorded by the moon cell, was wrong. For war has always brought change, but in this day and age, humanity has mistaken stagnation for peace. And throughout it all, the moon cell continues to silently record what it sees without ever taking action. After endlessly analyzing the data it records, it files away its conclusions and resumes its role of voyeur. It is there on Earth that the whole of human existence is contained. Second. Yep. Whatever triumphs and tragedies befall mankind and their world, the moon cell continues to silently observe and record. It is that strength, that force of existence, that twice failed to see and understand. But now is not the time to become emotional. I have to tell the Holy Grail what my wish is. Input complete. I was able to enter my wish without a single mistake, I think. Now all there is for me to do is wait for the end of my tenuous existence to come. However, oddly, the time of my death doesn't seem to be coming anytime soon. Being one with the moon cell, I share its unique view of time where infinity can be contained in a single second. So even the briefest moment seems somewhere more drawn out than normal, but even with that, it Hold on, something seems a little off. <sighs> Damn it, if that's how it's going to be, why did I bother coming? 
I can hear my servant mutter into my ear. They aren't there in person, but as a part of the Holy Grail. My guess is that my servant had somehow slipped unseen into the Holy Grail the same time I entered. Easy, Mika. When a master disappears, their servant disappears too, until they are summoned by another. I thought I'd stick around and help out until we both fade away, but it seems I was worrying about nothing. I must have slipped into the Holy Grail, hoping somehow to delay my inevitable demise. My servant may be pessimistic, cynical, and bitterly sarcastic, but at his core, he is a good person. However, a delay this long can't be the result of my servant's presence. Something else must be going on. Since I'm connected to the Moon Cell, it shouldn't be too difficult to find out what's going on. In what seems to be only a heartbeat, the whole of my consciousness arrives as one long data file. Is this you? It looks like your medical records. Cryogenic storage? The info in this data file concerns a patient with a fatal brain disease that affects memory retention. And the only doctor familiar with the surgical procedure used to treat the disease died in a terrorist attack. Right, I forgot about that bit. Until another surgeon could replicate the procedure, the patient was put into cryogenic storage. If there is a living human that shares my exact identity, then I may be more than random bits of data. That must be the reason why I'm still around. The moon cell needs more time to analyze this new information. But I'm sure that guy didn't come here as a magus. I'm just a copy of a person, trapped in an endless dream. Whatever the case, my fate is almost assured. I'm sure that my time here is fast coming to an end. However, there remains enough time to send out one final message. All right, uh... While we're doing the credits, who do we raid and what do we raid with? What is this data? You're actually alive? Ah, uh, that's not quite right. This is just the data you've been modeled after. That person isn't you. But at the same time, it is you. This person has the same heart, spirit, and pattern of the soul. So, turns out that you and I live in the same age after all. Fair enough. I dislike being the loser, and now that I know you exist on the outside, I'll track you down. If you're still asleep when I do, I'll pound away on you until you wake up. I'm pretty sure it will only take one of my infamously violent outbursts to bring you back to reality. And if I can manage it all, I want our reunion to be on a rooftop, somewhere with a beautiful view. Until then, please wait for me. I will come and find you. I promise. That promise was to both the boy that sleeps and the boy who begins to fade. That once she leaves this place, we will meet again. And it is because of that promise that I can finally allow myself to be at peace. Uh, you know what? We already raided him yesterday, but he's on. Let's go ahead and raid him again. Uh, we're going to go ahead and raid to Love Trouble. And we're going to raid with... Uh, Archer Route Complete. done with this 
uh, uh, join me tomorrow where I will rate I will stream at the same time and um, who knows what I'll be streaming then I will see you guys later let's go ahead and raid <laughs>